Hi guys, I was waiting to make this project for a long time and I finally have this new workshop which is very big and I also have the material that I need to make a custom made workshop table and it will be huge. So now I have the metal bars, I have the wood which is this here, I also have the tools that I need so I bought some new tools and also some screws, some washers and so on. And I also have some special components for a special part of this project. So hear me out. You see I want to make this table to also have automatic height adjustment. So for that I made this design, this will be a part that will be inside of the metal bar, it will have a high torque motor and a system with bearings and a lead screw and like that it will push the leg upwards and downwards. But you see the tricky part is that I want this to be inside of the metal part and also the wiring will be inside as well because like that everything will be hidden and look a lot better. So that will be the tricky part, so the design of this will be a little bit complicated. So guys, this video will be made without a script and will be made on the go because I haven't planned anything yet. So I'll start cutting, assembling the table and so on. So sorry if this video will have very few parts which are edited and also if the video will get a little bit, a little bit too long. So it will be like this, me recording something, explaining what I'm doing and so on. But trust me, you will enjoy this project and also learn something new. So guys, let's get started. My new project was requiring some flexible PCBs, and PCBWay was the right solution for that. And the order process is so simple, just go to PCBWay.com and select flexible PCBs. Upload your Gerber files as always and select your settings directly on their website. You also have the option for rigid flex PCBs if you want, and other settings for the color, the thickness, the gold immersion and so on. I received my PCBs in just a couple of days and they look amazing. The tracks are very small but even so, PCBWay did a great job and they have capabilities that go even lower than that and you could check them on their website. So try yourself their services for flexible PCBs like mine and like that you can complete your awesome project. And check more for other services for prototyping PCBs, automatic assembly, SMD stencil and much more on PCBWay.com. What's up my friends, welcome back. So any project should start with a good idea, then you make the design and also select a part list. And in my case I already have the idea which is making a workshop table. So when I start making the design I usually start with a very childish drawing on a piece of paper. We make some designs here, we make some sizes, but like this I know this is very crude. But this will help me know the final size of the product and also how much material I need and what parts I need. So usually I start on a piece of paper and then I pass the design to the PC. Okay, so basically the first thing to do is to measure the space that we have to work with, which in my case, it will be from that wall right there till this column here. So I'm using my ruler, I measure the space and then I start drawing. And I decide first, I decide the height of my table. In my case, I want it to be a little bit higher than the usual desk, which usually is from 70, maybe to 75 centimeters. But my workshop table, I want it to be from 80 to 90 centimeters plus the height that will be added with the automatic adjusting uh, of the height. So in that way, I will have a very tall workshop table like those laboratory tables. So I will probably be able to work standing and also have my back very straight because sometimes while I'm working, my back will hurt. So that's the decision that I've made. So now that I know the sizes, I go to the paper, I draw it and then I pass that information to the computer. Okay, so once I have my sketch, I get into Blender, which is the software that I usually use to make my 3D designs. But at the same time, there is another very important part, which is selecting the material. And usually I make that simultaneously because these parts that I'm using for this project are very expensive. Just have in mind that the bars, the metal bars, the wood and some screws and nuts for two tables cost me around $500 or even more, plus the machinery and all the tools that I bought for this project. So you have to search online till you get the best prices and also the best quantity for that price. So usually I search for the metal bars, I design a little bit, I change that if I find a new metal bar or a new component or new kind of screws. So usually each time that I'm designing something, I also search online on online for parts. So I always go online and compare prices. So for the metal bars, I've selected these ones. These are 40 by 40 millimeters. These are square bars. And also the thickness of the hole is of 1.5 millimeters. So they are quite strong. And by the way, the length of these metal bars are of 3 meters, so I have enough to make my entire table the longest I want it, 
the width as I want it and the height as I want it. And when I search for these parts online, well, you see, I don't have a truck, I don't have a big car, and the worst of all is that I live far away from any Home Depot, so I can't go and buy the parts myself. So I always have to check it online. And as you know, for these big parts and also very heavy, the shipping is almost the same as the product. So in my case, I have to select the shop that also gives a very low shipping cost. But if you live near a Home Depot, you should go yourself using your car because in that way, the price will be a lot lower. And for the wood, I bought these MDF boards. These are 1.6 millimeter thickness and they are 122 centimeters wide and 244 centimeters long. They are quite big and very heavy. It was very difficult to get them up here. Uh, but anyway, for now they are resting here, but in a moment I will cut them to size and add them to my table. And I also bought some other parts of wood in case that I will add another layer below this first layer for the table. And I have the other wood right here, but this is not important for now because this will be extra. Once I have the entire table, I might add another layer below to add some drawers or maybe to store something be below the table. But this is not important for now. And I also bought like one kilogram of screws and nuts, as you can see here and also some metal brackets that we'll use later. So we are ready for the blender design because we have the metal bars, we have the wood, we have the screws, the nuts, and also some 3D printed parts, which you will see in a moment, and the brackets. So let's start the design. Okay guys, so this is the final design. As you can see, I have the distance between this wall here and the column, as I've shown you before. So this will be the exact same size that I need for my workshop. And this bar here will be of 275 centimeters long. The depth of the table is of 85 centimeters and the height will be of also of 85 centimeters. So this bar here will be of 81 centimeters plus four more, four more centimeters from this bar. And as you can see, I decided to go with five bars here, three, four, five, to have a lot of support. As I've told you before, these are the thick brackets and this will give a lot more support. So all this rectangular part here will be a lot more, uh, a lot stronger. And then we have the legs with a lot more, a lot more support and a lot of brackets. And as I've told you, we have two type of brackets, actually three, this type, this type, which is 90 degrees like this, and this type here, which is also 90 degrees, but is flat. And then I've told you that I will use this wood, since the wood is not exactly 275 centimeters long, I will need this part and then cut a different part here. And this will be here on top. And as I told you, I might use some other type of wood just below that to make another layer. And this maybe in the future, I will add some drawers and uh, a space for the tools and so on. So this is basically the design. I'll start cutting the metal parts and then just add screws, brackets, and make the entire table. Okay guys, so let's make a small pause here and let me tell you why I want to use screws and not a welding machine. Why I can't weld. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one who can't weld because doesn't have a welding machine or for other reasons. I have three main reasons that I will want to use screws. First of all, a welding machine will make a lot of toxic fumes, radiation, and the worst of all is that it literally spits melted metal all around and my floor is made out of wood. So I'm pretty sure that if I were to use a welding machine inside of this small apartment, I will fill it with fumes and also maybe cause a fire. And the second reason is that since this is a small apartment, my power outlet doesn't have enough power for a welding machine. And I'm pretty sure that my jumper will jump every five minutes because that machine uses a lot of current. So that's why a welding machine is not a solution for my project, but I have another reason. So for the third reason is that this is a rented apartment. So if I were to weld the frame of the table, I wouldn't be able to take it out never because it will be here and it will stay here. And by the way, this is a duplex apartment. So my workshop is up here, but I live down there. Just, just let me show you. So basically this is my apartment and the workshop is up there. So imagine a huge table, which is welded. You can take it apart. Imagine taking that out with using these small stairs. It will be impossible. So that's why I want to use screws. So if in a, in a year or maybe two years, I leave this place, I could just unmount it and take it piece by piece. But you see using these screws, it's not that easy to merge these parts neither because you need a lot of strength and support. And basically, how can you add a screw to merge these parts together? For that, I want to use this kind of metal brackets. I have this type and also this type for 90 degrees corners. And basically, I will add one like this and the other bar on top, creating a 90 degrees uh, angle. But the problem is, how can you fit a screw inside and also keep in place the nut on the inside, especially when the nut will be in the middle of the bar? Basically, that will be very difficult. That's why I've designed these 3D parts. And don't worry, these 3D parts are not used to add support to the table. 
because they will break very fast. I mean, this is just plastic. But I've made these 3D parts just to keep in place the nut till I add the screw in place and the, basically the screw will be between the metal bracket and the metal bar. So as you can see, this 3D part has some holes. So I'll add the nut here. Then I'll fit this inside of the metal bar on the other side. I make the holes until I can see the nut inside and then I'll add the screw and like that I can fit this, uh, I can join this together using the metal brackets. And by the way, this is also 1.5 millimeters, so it will be quite strong. So if you take a look at the design, I have a metal bracket like this on the top part and some other metal brackets like this one here all around adding a lot of support. Like that, it will all be like modular and I can use just screws and anytime that I will leave this place, I can just unscrew the older parts and take it away part by part. So that's why I want to use screws and that's why I want to use these 3D printed parts. So for the top part of the frame, I'll use these brackets, which are a lot thicker. So the tough parts will need a lot more force, but for the rest of the parts, I will use these ones. And instead of using 3D parts, I'll use these insertion nuts. Basically, this will get inside of the hole and it will create a threaded hole. As you can see, I can now add a screw. This is also M6. The reason that I don't want to use these insertion nuts for the top part is because they won't be flat on the metal part. Basically, it will have like 1.5 millimeters going outside of the metal bar. But I want the entire part of the top part to be flat. And also, when you have the metal flat on the other bar, you have a lot more support. But imagine that you have this 1.5 millimeter in between, the bar will move a lot. So that won't give a very uh, strong part on the top side. That's why on the top side I'm using these brackets directly with screws and holes in the metal bar. And for the rest, I'll use these insertion nuts, uh, which will be added with this tool here. You will see later. Okay, so first I use my brand new machines and cut all the metal bars to size. So here I activate the laser. So I have this line here. Adjust it exactly where I want to cut it. There you go. And now, And you have all the sizes that I've used below in the description, together with all the plans the 3D design of the table and also the 3D parts that I've used. And I bought these machines especially for this project, but now that I have more space, I'm sure that I'll be using them a lot more. The metal bars are 3 meters long, so I decide how to cut each part, so I would use the less metal possible. I need to use a total of 8 bars of 3 meters. So I will cut them like this as you can see in this list. First I've made the 81 cm leg parts. We need 5 of them. Then I cut the 275 cm bars. And we need 3 of these. Then I cut one more bar into 2 of 131.5 cm. And finally I make all the needed bars of 77 cm. So now I have all the metal bars. First I will make the top frame, and for that I will use this 3D part and mark where I need a hole. I know where the hole will be because this part is the same as the one that will go inside. So using a 6mm drill I make the holes. Then I fill the 3D printed support with M6 nuts. Now I fit them inside of the bar till we can see the nut through the hole. And now we just use some screws and the big bracket for each corner. And I do the same process for the 77 cm bars. And just like that the top frame is ready and looks pretty strong and stable. I do the same for the legs. Once I have 5 legs, I flip the table and start adding the rest of the metal bars. And now I have the structure of the table. Hey guys, and sorry for making another pause here. I know this video is getting a little bit too long for such a simple project, but I'm learning stuff at the same time that you are learning uh, too. So basically I wanted to tell you that I didn't use these insertion nuts till the end. And that's because I didn't realize how difficult it is to make a 10 mm hole in a 1.5 mm steel bar. This is very hard to make to drill. And basically for each corner like this one, I need four holes. So I have to make four holes of 10 mm and that is very difficult. And I even bought a drill that cost me $30 
and especially made for very hard steel. So the problem is not the drill, but the problem is that drilling such a thick bar is very difficult. So instead of using these insertion nuts, I've decided to use these screws. This is called a self-drilling screw. Basically, it has a very small drill bit in the, in the tip. So basically, you make a very small hole, and that is very easy to make with a drill. And then you place this screw and just screw it directly inside of the steel. This is made of a very strong metal, so it can withstand the forces from the steel, so you can screw it directly inside of that hole. So like that, all I have to do is to make some very small holes, which will take me just a few seconds, and then I'll use these screws to screw these corners, because otherwise it would take me a few days to make all the, the holes for 10 millimeters. Imagine if each of these needs uh, four holes and I have like 20 or 30 uh, corners like this one, imagine how long it will take me to make all the holes. So that's why I decided to use these screws and this is a much uh, better option to use. By the way guys, compared with the final design, I removed these bars here, we had two more bars because they are not necessary, the frame is quite strong, but I did put this one here, which wasn't in the final uh, design, because in that way we have much more support here, and we also have this bar, which will support uh, the middle part, because we don't have a leg here, I don't want to have a leg on the front part. Okay guys, so the next step was to cut the board, once I measure it, which is only 90 centimeters width, I'm using my new tool, which has this guide, and like that I can cut a very straight line, it was very easy to cut, and in just a couple of minutes I have my board, so now all I have to do is to make some uh, screw holes and then mount it on top of the, the frame, and that's it. Okay, so the wood board is now in place, we have to cut that uh, piece that uh, is missing there, but I've aligned it with the metal bar, so all I will do now is make some holes, maybe one here, here, two more there and two more in the middle, and then screw it to the table, and that's it. So using a 3mm drill bit I make some holes all around the wood board and also into the metal bar. Then I use this tool to enlarge the hole entrance, so the screw will fit flat on the wood board. Then I just add some screws and that's it. So guys, just like that, my huge workshop table is pretty much ready, but in order to protect it, I have to paint these metal bars so they won't rust, but I don't have the paint for that yet, I will do it uh, next week. But till then I have this uh, varnish, so I'll apply a few coats of varnish on the top here, because I'm pretty sure that I will use a lot of materials that will spill and so on. So in order to protect it, I will clean it, maybe even uh, smooth it down a little bit with some sandpaper and apply some varnish. And that will be it. The table will be ready. And by the way, for the next project, I will 3D print some parts and they make, then make some drawers. So all this part here will be filled with some... Johnny, what are you doing here? So as I was saying, all these parts here will be filled with some drawers. So while I'm be, I will be working, I will just pull out the drawer and take out the tools that I need and so on. So I get a sponge roller and my light varnish. I apply a thin coat all around. And once it's dry, I will apply another coat. And probably in the future, I will add some sort of nylon mat on top of the table to protect it. So guys, just like that, the table is finished. I know that for you guys it's just a few minutes, but for me it was like three or four days. It was a lot of work, especially that I don't have enough room here. I can't use the drill press. I can't use a lot of tools because I don't have space because the bars are three meters long. But anyway, it was a lot of work, but I've also learned a lot of stuff. Like for example, using better screws and better tools. And sorry that this video is too long because I was making this on the go and I don't have time to make the automatic adjustment system in this video and that will be for second part. But basically I already have the design with an encoder because you need to know the exact height of each leg with the DC motor, with the gearbox and also the controller and that will be inside of a leg like this one and that's it. Like that I can adjust the height of my table, getting it up and down whenever I want with some push buttons right here. I hope that you enjoyed this project and that you have learned something new. Thanks again and see you later guys. My workshop is a mess right now, but anyway, one more thing I wanted to tell you, as you can see, my last light system for now is just very crude, just a few light bulbs right here, because I didn't have anything. That's why I bought these things right here, and each tube will have uh, an LED strip inside. I think it's a total of 45 watts. So this is for a future project, where I'll install this for my workshop and also add some sort of Alexa or IoT system so I could control my lights and turn them on and off from anywhere in the world. So stay tuned for that, guys.